gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds were gathered around him that he got down to a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus is not just talking to the disciples. He is talking about us. This parable could get us to do a little soil sampling of our hearts, our minds, our bodies. This parable challenges us to ask ourselves how to make the soil of ourselves more ready to receive the seed that is the word of the kingdom. How can we be good soil so we can produce grain a hundredfold? and be part of a great agricultural ripple effect that makes more seed to be sown near and far and take root in places that we may never dream of. How can we root out the thorns of worldly busyness, worry, self-interest, pettiness, greed, how can we do that so that the word of the kingdom can settle deep within us, make a home in us, and bear fruit? These are good questions. And if being good soil is the goal, there is help for us. Gardeners and farmers tell us that soil is good for planting, has particular characteristics. Good soil has a lot of humps, decayed material like grass roots and leaves that encourage good nutrients, good drainage, good aeration. Good soil has room for water and air to move through it and to get to seeds and plant roots. And although it seems like it's just an inert substance, good soil is full of life. For instance, earthworms burrow through it, taking needed material from the surface of the soil down deep where it can decompose and make more rich humus. So, good soil seems
seems to be the result of letting some stuff go, die even, perhaps be burned away, to allow room for life-promoting organisms to do their work. The same may be said of our hearts. To be receptive to the word of the kingdom, we need to let some old false ideas go, maybe even die. Letting them become compost might be the first step. Letting in life-giving, wholeness-producing understanding of Jesus and the true nature of God's reign can turn worthless clay into soil good for planting. We can be good soil in which seeds take root and grow into healthy seed-bearing grain. Who wouldn't want to be a part of making God's bumper crop of growth and new life? Yet, perhaps Jesus has another good word for us in this parable, just not telling us to come on, be good soil, but also the reassurance that has to do with the sower rather than the soil. Perhaps Jesus has an invitation for us to be sowers, not just soil. In the early church, for those in whom the word of God and the word of the kingdom initially took root, it brought healing, peace, joy, Yet there was still mystery. Why doesn't everyone who hears believe the word of God? What, why is what is so clear to us imperceptible to others? Why when we say Jesus is Lord, even at the risk of our lives, don't others get it? What's wrong here? We may wonder some of the same things. Faith in Jesus is important to us. We go to church. We're here listening to this reflection. Why isn't everyone? Why are churches getting smaller and struggling? Is there something wrong with the word? Is the seed not what we thought it was? Are we wasting our time? Is there something else that we should like to let take root in our heart? Keeping soil good for planting can be hard work sometimes. And we want to know, is it worth it? Did the sower get it wrong? Jesus assures us that there is nothing wrong with the seed. The sower is dependable. But here's what happens when the seed falls on different kinds of grounds. Trust the sower, trust the seed. Take a clue from the sower. The sower's approach to sowing is carefree, to say the least. The sower flings seeds willy-nilly as he or she goes, with seeming disregard for where the seed will go. To this sower, it's as if the seed is so precious it can't be held onto. It has to be shared. To hold on to the seed would be to squander it. The sower's method seems to be to fling the seed as he goes, letting it land where it will and keep going. The sower covers a lot of ground, not sticking to one pathway or field or territory. The point is for the sower, the point is to sow. The sower is often taken to be God or Jesus, and that's a good analogy. God in Jesus flung the seed of the word of the kingdom wherever he went, and it found good soil in some places where others thought there was nothing good or holy, thought that nothing like that could even begin to grow there. God in Jesus never said a word about some people deserving to hear the good news and others not. Jesus sowed the word 
of the kingdom, wherever he went. Yet in clarification of the parable, Jesus doesn't say, I am the sower. He just says that the sower sows the word. Wherever that sower is, wherever the sower goes, and sometimes the word gets snatched away by the devil, and sometimes people fall away because the following is costly and risky, and sometimes the cares of the world choke the word, and sometimes the word bears a ridiculously abundant harvest. Jesus is saying, so, don't worry about whether the soil is good or bad, receptive or not. Don't be saving up seeds for the places you think will be the most fertile. This seed is so precious, it has to be shared, and there's plenty more seed where it came from. Not every bit of fruitful sowing is going to happen in perfection. Now, I have something that Benjamin is going to hand to each of you. It is a packet of seeds. No, I'm not going to tell you what kind of seeds they are. <laughs> That's why they aren't marked. What this is for you to do is to start sewing, flinging them, not in here, <laughs> when you get home with faith and just see what happens. So our mission, our job, is to get out there and start flinging the seeds of faith. I assure you, you will be surprised when they sprout. One thing I will say, no, they're not vegetables. <laughs> I remember planting some broccoli one time, and it turned into cauliflower. <laughs> and it said broccoli on it. <laughs> that was not good. So, get on out there. Fling them. Share them. So, you will be totally amazed by the abundant beauty of your crop. Amen.